Hello, my YouTube subscribers or YouTube family. Um, this is Nalina again, y'all, and I'm coming with another video just to um, share something that I've learned from God, something I've learned from the Bible, something that I hope could add value to your life and your walk with God. Um, and I just want to encourage somebody today, somebody who could possibly be struggling in an area of their life and they just want to give it all to God. They, they're tired of going through the motions, going through the same thing over and over again. Um, I want to share from uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Um, even as an unbeliever, you may have heard um, this scripture, the, this uh, chapter before. Um, it's very popular. I'll go over it with you and then I'll explain to you uh, what it is saying and what it means to me, okay? All right. So 2 Timothy chapter 3, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying its power, have nothing to do with such people. They are the kind who warm their ways into homes and gain control over gullible women who are loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kinds of evil desires. Always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Just as Jans and Jambres opposed Moses, so also these teachers oppose the truth. They are men of depraved minds who as far as the faith is concerned, are rejected, but they will not get very far because, as in the case of those men, their folly will be clear to everyone. Man, I'm telling y'all, every time I read the scripture, you guys, it just lets me know how backwards this world really is, y'all. How much deceit is going on in our world today how much of our youth is being their minds are being distorted and to thinking that it's okay to sin it's okay to live like this you know especially with social media and facebook and instagram and all of these other websites that they have out now that just constantly repeatedly show people that sin is fun sin is okay it's so you know it, it's just so popular to have these behaviors right it's, it's so um possible to be boastful to be proud to be abusive disobedient uh unforgiving right um this is what the world is teaching us and so this is the reason why i wanted to come and share this scripture with you guys um, this scripture actually helped me a little bit with my own um, challenges in life, you know, as far as sin goes. It really helped me to want to be delivered, you know what I mean? Um, because when I became a woman, you know, uh, I just always thought like every little kid, you know, when I become a woman, I can do what I want to do, right? I don't have to listen to nobody. I make the rules, right? But uh, I was very, very wrong. You know, I lived any type of way. I see myself in, in all of this, right? Um, proud, abusive, disobedient, without love, unforgiving, all of these things. And I never thought that it would matter. You know, I never thought that uh, it was ruining my life or it was causing me to you know be perished or be folly or be gullible or anything like that i always thought that i was just doing what the world did and it was okay um but it says here 
there are kind there that that have nothing to do with such people, right? Have nothing to do with such people. So imagining myself as uh, the people that this scripture is describing in the last days, and then knowing that there is someone who is saved, that God is telling, have nothing to do with these type of people, right? So just think about the relationships that you could have had or the people and the friends and the lifestyle that you should have um, if you didn't live the way that the last days, the people in the last days are living, right? You, you can have a saved life. You can have a life fulfilled. You can have a holy life. You can have a life with love. You can have a life with forgiveness. You can have a life where you don't have to worry about anybody slandering your name. You don't have to worry about people being just using you for pleasure and rather really loving you, right? Um, God doesn't want his children this way. He doesn't want us this way. And it tells you right here in uh, verse six of this chapter, why he says, because these people are the kind of people that warm their ways into the homes and gain control over gullible women who are already y'all loaded down with sins and are swayed by all kind of evil desires, right? And are always learning, but never able to come to a knowledge of the truth. Wow. So these type of people, God is saying to stay away from them because just imagine you're saved and you get around these people. What are they going to do, right? What are they going to do? They're going to take, they're going to gain control. They're going to gain control because of your goal, because of you being so gullible, right? When we think about this, we think about, oh, you know, our cousins, our friends, our, our our sisters, our brothers, anybody that is close to us that's just in the world, right? We love them so dearly, right? But God says, stay away from them. Why? Because they gain control. You don't want that type of spirit to gain control over your home, right? And then not only are they gaining control, but they are gaining control over people who are loaded down with sins and swayed by all kinds of evil desires. So not only are these people very, very, you know, lustful and unforgiving and slanderous and everything, but they would bring people who are already suffering with sin down even more. They gain control of your home then you already struggling with sin yourself. You already, you know, you're not perfect. So you need the Lord, right? And they gain control. So what, they, what they're doing, they're putting themselves above God, right? And then you already dealing with sin. They're going to bring, they're going to bring you down even more. They're going to bring you down even more by swaying you to uh, go ahead and sin even more. You know, they gain control, capture you, and then bring you down with more evil desires, right? And then you loving this person or you wanting to be around this person, it says that you will be learning, but you will never fully come to the truth. That means that you will never be able to get to God. You will never, ever be able to have a good relationship with the Lord, right? Because not only have they gained control, but they have also taken advantage to your of your evil desires, right? And now you're, you, you just, you're trapped. It's a trap. It's a trap. God says, stays, stay away from these type of people, right? These people are teaching you to oppose people who want to live righteously. They're teaching you to oppose. Like it said, as James and Jambres opposed Moses, also these teachers are opposing the truth. So they are teaching you to oppose Jesus Christ. 
They are teaching you to oppose your, your Lord and Savior, your Heavenly Father. They are teaching you to oppose the scriptures, the Bible. And you ever notice that people who live like this, when you try to talk about God around them, they they always kind of like just, you know, don't want to be bothered with you, right? You're weird all of a sudden. You're tripping. You, you, you know, you ain't, you, you trying to, you, you trying to mess up whatever they vibes are, right? They don't want to have nothing to do with you. They trying to live like this thing says, unforgiving, without self-control, conceited, lovers of pleasure, right? But God said before this chapter ends, he said, as far as the faith is concerned, these people who oppose the truth are already rejected. They're rejected. They have no relationship with God. They don't have a relationship with God. So all of this stuff, being lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient, unforgiving, slanderous, self-control, brutal, lovers of pleasure instead of lovers of God, now you then gain the control of the house of a gullible person, a person who just wants to be close to you, just want to be your friend, right? Now that person has to struggle not only with their own evil desires, but they have to struggle with the fact that you have control, right? And now they are going through this cycle of they know that you're you're not living right. They know that you're uh, doing wrong. They they know this. They're learning this, right? But they never turn to God, right? You, you, you're never turning to God. You're never turning to God. Now, you're not turning to God. This person is opposing God as well. And now, guess what? They're rejected. And of course, because they have control over everything that you're going, you got going on with your life, you're rejected, right? He says that they do not get very far. This type of living, you don't get very far. And as you can see, a lot of us are just, I mean, I'm in, I'm 36 years old. A lot of people my age are just dropping like flies. They're just dying left and right. They are dying left and right. They are trying to live a life without God. And it says their folly will be clear to everyone. And the thing about this is all of this stuff that the that people are doing in these last days is just clear to everybody. It's clear to everybody. And this is this is the thing. They say a a, a, a flock of a feather run together, right? So the foolishness is seen by everybody. And all of these people that are usually doing this, they all kind of run together, right? They all run together. And God is saying, you got to be the one set apart. Stay away from them. Because as time goes on, they might be doing this, they might be doing that, but their foolishness will be revealed. That means shame is going to come upon these type of people, right? And, you know, it's sad, but of course they become the laughing stock, right? And it's sad. And this, this scripture, it delivered me from wanting to be the, these type of ways. Because all this stuff I've seen myself do. I've seen myself be ungrateful. I've seen myself being unholy. I've seen myself without love, being unforgiving, slandering other people's names, right? Saying things about people that I shouldn't be saying. Having a love of fornication, right? And not loving God, right? That I've seen myself do this. And the whole time, what I was doing was separating myself from God. I was accept I was accepting to be 
you know, without knowledge. God says his people perish for the lack of knowledge. It's in the scriptures. Um, and I wish I could tell you what scripture that is, but I don't have it on the on the top of my uh on the top of my tongue right now. But it's a very popular scripture as well. But God says that his people perish for a lack of knowledge. I think that's Hosea. That's what I want to say. And it's sad because we could know the truth, but we have to, what? Separate ourselves. And we got to understand people like this, they live in a world of, of, of demonic strongholds. So they become very deceitful, very devious, right? In their, in their actions, right? And they just gain control. People tend to, to say, well, why I can't leave this person alone? Or why I can't stop being around this person? They have a stronghold on you and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. But when you get to God, when you get to the word of God, when you get to the scriptures and you learn what God is saying, God reveals the truth to you. This is why you are feeling the way that you're feeling. This is the way why you feel shame. This is why you feel trapped because you are in a, in a demonic place. You're in the last days and you need to set yourself apart. These people do, uh, they oppose Moses. Remember, Moses was the one that was trying to set us free from Egypt. He was trying to get us out of the stronghold of the Pharisees, right? They opposed Moses. So they're okay with being slaves to sin, right? So... What this scriptures is saying to me is that women and men that are in the world today, and I understand we got trends, we got things that we love. Everybody, you know, want to enjoy life, right? But you can enjoy life without sin. You can. You really, really can. For one, when you decide that you don't want to live this way, you have the help of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit teaches you how to have self-control. And the Holy Spirit also teaches you how to have joy in not being a slave to sin. Sin is fun when it comes down to pleasure, right? When it comes down to our flesh, Sin is okay, but when it comes down to our spirit, our heart, and our soul, and our mind, and our responsibilities, and who we are as children of God, sin is against us. It doesn't never really let us get to our full, our, our full potential. It never lets us get to who God has called us to be. And this is the reason why it's dangerous because, yeah, you're getting the fulfillment of, you know, a good time. But are you living a virtuous life? Are you living for God? Are you living in your full potential? Are you all that God has called you to be? Is that little bit of fun really worth your future, your destiny? Your, your relationship with your Heavenly Father, getting to know God. So many people lose everything behind a good time. And, and it's saying, God is clearly saying these people are not for you, but they are against you. Why? Because they oppose your Father. They oppose the truth. They oppose everything that God wants for us. And so in that case, they oppose you. So 
be careful of who you call your friends. Be careful of what type of lifestyle you're living. Be careful because you might think that you're a good person because you, you like to do have fun and all this stuff, but you could be also hindering your brother and hindering your sister from being all that God has called them to be. So, guys, I hope this really blessed you. Um, uh, it's just a mouthful, and I don't want to keep you too long because I've already kept you for 20 minutes. But I hope this um, really blessed you, and I hope that you understand why this scripture is so important. And I pray that somebody gets delivered from this lifestyle because I have been that person. And I'm telling y'all, once I got freed, I was happy. I was happy. I still deal with pain, but I'm happy that the enemy cannot trick me like this no more. And if everything is in God's hand, then I have nothing to be concerned about because God has control over my life. I rather trust God than man and a lot of people fail because they trust God they trust man more than they trust God and that's backwards I love you guys and I thank you so much for listening y'all have a blessed night